times. So guys, how are ya? It's good to see y'all. <laughs> Guys, I hope everybody's weekend has been great. Mine has been excellent. It's been stressful, but I mean, fun as always. Um, anyway, I am ready to introduce everybody, if you haven't seen already, to Ghost Hunters Corp. So this is kind of a, uh, like I said, it's a brand new game from a French developer. Uh, just came out yesterday, and it is... It's pretty intense. Um, we're gonna have quite a bit of fun when uh, when we're going into this one. I'm gonna die a lot. <laughs> Let's just be honest. I am absolutely going to uh, to just die over and over and over until I get this right. Because uh, last week or last night when we, me and my buddy Doc were trying this, it uh, it didn't go so well, um, and I kind of went in blind. Which I, I to be honest, I probably shouldn't. Being early access, the uh, the tutorials aren't quite there yet but they're coming uh and there's a really really great community as far as uh getting this game kind of off the ground and introducing it to everybody uh but since then i've i've watched some tutorials i watched a couple of other people play it so i have a better understanding of actually how to do this game and uh i'm hoping that at least one time tonight i'm gonna beat this stupid ghost so uh this is Ghost Hunters, uh, Ghost Hunters Corp. So we are essentially ghost hunters. You might see a lot of similarities to uh, Phasmophobia. However, there is a little bit of a twist. So the ghosts are going to be a lot more aggressive. Uh, they are uh, very, very intent on killing you. Uh, but there's a lot of other ways that you can stop them from killing you. Um, there is also uh, a lot of new triggers, a lot of new uh, uh, tech that you can use, uh, some new variety about how to actually figure out what the ghost is, and most of all, you have to exercise the ghost. So it's not just a finding, it's a finding and destroying. So that's what we're going to be doing. But before before we do that, let's dive into the tutorial a little bit, get some understanding about how to actually play the game, uh, especially for those newer people who haven't actually experienced the game before. Like I said, there's a lot of uh, similarities to Phasmophobia, but there is also a ton of differences. And so it's always good to be able to kind of go through how this game functions versus the other, because they are two different games, and it's important to, to understand that again bear in mind as we go through this is early access so there's going to be a lot of funky stuff that goes on there's going to be bugs there's going to be some uh some things that we don't expect to happen and that's totally cool laura how's it going yes this is new just dropped yesterday uh it's called ghost hunter corp and it is uh it's intense <laughs> and uh there's a ton to it so uh uh, let's just kind of read through this. So you're a ghost hunter. Your goal will be to determine the nature of the supernatural entities, meaning what type of ghost it is, uh, which will then have to be sent back to oblivion. So you are going to be uh, exercising these be beasts. Uh, the entities present in different places and are generally very aggressive. Do not try and hide uh, and fight them with your equipment because they're, they're going to wreck you, as I found out last night. Uh, so here's the basic path uh, that you'll follow to complete your mission. One. Choose carefully. There's a lot of different levels that you can do. Some of them are very, very uh, hard. Some of them are a lot more easy. Honestly, I'm still trying to figure out how to switch the difficulty. I'm getting there. We'll, we'll find it out. <laughs> uh, before starting the mission, remember to buy enough materials so you don't run out of equipment. That is incredibly important. However, I'm brand new to this. I don't have any money, so we're kind of going in with just the basics. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to kind of expand on my uh, my uh, payroll a little bit. Uh, so once the mission is started, you'll need to get back to the uh, uh, go to the back of the motorhome. The onboard computer will provide you with your equipment you need and you have previously purchased before starting your investigation. That we'll get into once we actually start the mission. So I'll show you a little bit more about that. Uh, oh, you're downloading it already. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you're going to place the objects here and there in the haunting location to help determine the various clues of what the ghost actually is. This is where things get really, really interesting. It's a lot like phasmophobia. It's in one area of the house, but you still have to determine where it is. And even though it's just kind of in one area, the stupid ghost is going to go everywhere, so you are not safe anywhere in the house, in the fort, in the the uh, in the map, anywhere. 
you're not even safe inside of the motorhome outside. It will chase you. It will jump into the car and it will toss you through the window. <laughs> Alrighty. Once a clue is found, open your tablet, then to the ghost, uh, Ghostpedia application and enter the clues found. You will also have to deduce the type of entity by observing its interactions, its movements, and its method of haunting. We'll get a little bit more into that, and we're going to find out a lot of this stuff together as we work through this. Um, and then once the nature of the entity has been found, select it in the table to the right of the onboard computer, as well as in the Ghostpedia application. Now that tells us what we need to do to get rid of this jerk. For that, your Ghostopedia application will tell you the exorcism protocol to follow to defeat the enemy. According to the clues you've collected, you will have to validate them all to completely wipe out the evil entity from the world of the living. Meaning you don't have to do just one, you have to do a whole bunch. So it's, it's crazy. So once the spirit has been exercised and the side mission's completed, or not, uh, all you have to do is just return to the base. Uh, so a couple of things, and these, these some of these are pretty cool. If you flee the mission without exercising the ghost menace, your equipment that you've deployed and placed outside the motorhome will be left behind. So that means that if you leave a crucifix, if you leave a camera, if you leave um, anything inside of that house and you, you book it, it's gone. You're not getting it back. Um, in multiplayer, this is actually really fun. In multiplayer, you can actually bring your comrades unconscious or fainted dead body back to the motorhome. It, it essentially turns them into a, a, a rag doll and you get to carry them by their hair and drag their hair or their, drag their face along the ground. Uh, if you drag them back to the motorhome, they'll recover some of their their uh, money and experience from the mission. So it's really important uh, to help kind of share the load and make it so your um, your teammates don't go out empty handed. Finally, the ghost reacts to simple actions and names. Um, when you're in a, a multiplayer game, you don't have in-game chat. I know it's something that's coming soon, but it's not there yet. However, Discord allows you to be able to talk with your uh, with your teammates, um, but you can still interact with that ghost. Talk to it. Say, hey, spirit, can you please write in my book? Can you open a door? Um, all things like that. So that is the basic tutorial. Now, this is your tablet, obviously, um, and it has a lot of different things. Like there's the tutorial that we just went through. Here's the Ghostpedia that we talked about. So here's all the different types of ghosts that we have. Uh, here are the different clues and evidence that we can we can find that can lead us to the exorcism path. So this is all the things that we need to do to exercise our, our ghost. Uh, Laura, is this game up to four people? Yes, it is. So it can play up to four, four uh, teammates on a time. So children category. Yes. So where is it? Where is it? Children category. This category of entity is easily identified by, by its childlike appearance. It is formed from the soul of a child who escaped limbo after losing their life in a monstrous and mysterious way. <laughs> yeah, there's some crazy stuff in this game. It is it's nuts. So um, without further ado, we have this little tutorial area. We also have our, uh, our bus over there, our RV. And these are our different tools for exercising or saving yourself, at least to try and get away from the ghost. Let's go over to the tutorial area really quick. Yeah, WTF, no, <laughs> no joke. So it's, uh, it's a nutso game, I'm telling you. Alrighty, so here we have our door. It's a door. There's nothing really special about the door. However, something that is very similar to Phasmophobia is that when a ghost is hunting, you know, you have the door open. You have to shut that thing and hold it shut because it will open it and come right through. However, something that Phasmophobia does not do is the ghost is going to beat on that door until it rips it off the hinges. So you only have so long for this door to actually last. So tips, closing the door uh, up to hear the ghost or the door close sound, which is that um, while pr preserving the mouse click press, you block the door and it will prevent most of the entities uh, to pass. So like I said, if you hold it shut, they can't get through until, of course, they just rip it off the hinge. Uh, the you have to shoot the ghost. Well, not everyone. And shooting it is only part of it. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so that is the door. Next are kind of all the uh, the evidence gathering things. Check out this room. Eh? All right. So first off, we have our camera. 
this is pretty standard. It's a camera. However, if we take a look at the room, there's some things you might have noticed just by doing that little spin. Let me do a little slower spin. You see it? You see it? Or don't you see it? <laughs> All right. So I want you to look here. Invisible cursed object. You look right over to my uh, to my left side. Look. Eh. There's a pot there, but there's not a pot there. Also, there's a pentagram on the ground that we can't see. So these are things that we actually have to find and be able to, to discover in game to help us to be able to uh, both get money and to help exercise the ghost. Alrighty, let's uh, let's put you down for now. Um, oh, wait, another really cool thing about this is if I can remember how to do it. Uh, where is it? There, night vision mode. <laughs> so we can actually have night vision on our cameras, which is awesome. All right, next is the Occult Sniffer. Interesting name, but it's really kind of cool. So this device allows to detect close presence of cursed objects generating occults and paranormal energies. Uh, the sale of cursed objects gives you a bonus at the end of the game. What is that running sound? That's me actually moving around, so. Da, 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 da. Alrighty, so. If you remember when we went over or we were talking about the the camera, we had a little pentacle there on the ground. Let me turn this guy on. You can see that I'm turning it on just with the right click. If I step over that, something's here. So this will help me know when there's uh, a cult activity or cursed objects here in the uh, in the area. You can see this cursed object is really heavy in this thing to pop. So this is another thing of, of uh, evidence that's going to help us try and figure out what what we're actually looking for. Next, the instant camera. Alrighty. So you remember that pot that we have over here? Looks like a Polaroid, right? Take a look at this. There it is. <laughs> There's the invisible cursed object. So this cursed object is going to help us to be able to find these invisible things. So we find it with the original uh, video camera. And then we take a picture of, it of this instant camera, so that way it pops out. Take a look at this, the summoning pentacle. Wait, it's supposed to be here, I thought. Hey, there it is. So this helps us to be able to um, find things or make solid things that are invisible. Uh, and we can take that back to our office or back to our RV for more money, that... that uh, invisible item that invisible cursed object any cursed object honestly we can take back to our uh, to our rv a couple of other things uh we have wall writing and drawing we have uh yeah this is a drawing so it's just a picture on the wall this is wall writing so it's actual words those are things we need to keep a lookout for and then we have our mel a compact device that can detect the presence of nearby paranormal occult activity energy as well as the center surrounding temperature so this is a basic temperature temperature kind of like what we had in phasmophobia but it has a occult meter as well so you can see right now the occ occult meter is currently at 4.4 however when i get to something a little bit higher it jumps up so right now that occult meter when i'm on the pentagram is going to jump up to 20. if i take it back it goes back down to four Ta-da! if i however jump over to a cursed object those are going to run us at about eight. So these are things that are going to help us figure out what, what is uh, around us, even though we can't see it. So if I'm running around the, the building with this thing, I'm checking for temperatures, and I'm looking to see if, if the uh, occult thing rises. And anything that's an eight, that means that it's a cursed object. Anything that's in the 20 means that it's going to be one of these pentagrams. Super, super cool. All right, so that's just the, the basic evidence, but now we have a little bit more stuff that we can do. Actually, we've got a lot of stuff that we can do. Anyway, so we have a danger detector. We have a flashlight. We have an entity analyzer, a thermometer, an EMF, and we have an SLR <laughs> or a tripod camera as they call it. So here's the tripod camera. We could actually see that individual. So that is just a test dummy that we have over in the corner to help us see that a little bit better. Let's go ahead and pick up the flashlight and there he is. See? Okay, so there it is. You can also see that there are orbs. So we're still gonna be looking for orbs. Now, 
Couple of things about this. Obviously, we have the flashlight meter. Something that's new to Faz is we can have two things in your hand at any given time. We can also have three things equipped at any given time. So you got some extra extra pockets in this case. Alrighty, so we have our flashlight here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the flashlight down, obviously. Um, let me pick you back up. So let's go ahead and I'm still getting used to the, the controls myself. Alrighty, so let's move you over. Alrighty, so we're gonna go in here, check the temperature. The temperature is going to be zero. Ta-da! It's giving us an error because it's picking up uh, bad ghost activity. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Green Star, how you doing? <laughs> no, I, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna probably uh, have to change my pants halfway through too, so I totally get it. <laughs> Matt, how's it going, buddy? Uh, game is intense. Uh, played it three rounds last night and totally crapped the bed on all three. <laughs> but it's uh, it, the game itself is a lot of fun, and I'm hoping to actually have a little bit better uh, uh, go at it tonight. So we'll see how it works. Uh, just started to contract spawned in. Looked at that. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. I get it. <laughs> All right, so this is a spirit meter, I think. What it's a oh, spirit analyzer. So it's analyzing the uh, the the spirit. Here's something I can do. I can go ahead and throw that down. Let that continue running. In fact, if I take a look at it, you can see the number continue to rise, and that's going to help us to be able to determine what type of ghost we're actually dealing with. So that's super super important. Alrighty, let's go on back. So yeah, that was the entity analyzer, not the spirit analyzer, entity analyzer. Here is the EMF. Uh, this is just like what we had in Phasmophobia. There's not much to an EMF. It's an EMF meter. <laughs> Nothing special, but it is what it is. Um, and then finally, this guy over here on the corner. This is the danger detector. Now, I don't really see much value. Oh my God. I don't see a lot of value in the danger detector. Here's what it does. It adds a little bit of light, but not a ton. You can see it doesn't really light up the room all that much. However, when I get close to the entity, you see the light, it, it's kind of hard to see. It's very, very subtle, but the light itself turns yellow. That will let us know that the, the uh, spirit is near. Uh, the sounds in this game is so much more creepy than fast. Oh, I know. And there's so many more. Uh, the laughing of the demon. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, to be honest, I love games like this. I'm still not looking forward to playing it again. <laughs> and they do look a lot scarier. Anyway, so when the uh, when the thing is near, it turns yellow. When it starts to attack, this light turns red. So when you see this light go red, book it. <laughs> Didn't even leave the van and already heard someone screaming. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's crazy. Awesome. So, yeah, there is uh, there is all of that. I think that's everything in this list. Yeah. Yeah, that's all good. So we have the orbs. We have our scanner. Oh, let me go ahead and pick that guy up because this should be at. Yep, yeah, there we go. So it gives us the uh, the code here. So the one N underscore L one twenty. That is information that we will need to know what type of ghost this is and how to exercise it. These are all things that we'll find in. Hey, Green Star, thank you so much for the follow. I do appreciate it. So these are all things that are going to help us figure out what the uh, what the ghost is and how to actually get rid of it. So anyway, let's go ahead and toss you down because I don't need you anymore. And let's pull up that. Um, that ghostpedia and so we have some we have some basic knowledge we know that it has a uh uh a scan and it's giving us that one n underscore l120 um we check the electromagnetic field we know that it is a level three to four it's not a five i did not get an emf level five um i haven't checked or no the temperature was zero so we have that information uh, haven't checked for any written evidence or, or audio proof, but those are things we'll come back to here in just a second. 
Anyway, let's say that this is, we'll come to a Revenant. Why not? Let's just do a Revenant because they're stupid hard. Um, so the Revenant is an empty entity that clings to the physical world. She has particular uh, particularity of not being able to stand up due to the lack of occult energy and will crawl to grab you and steal your vital essence. Another thing... <laughs> Sympathetic. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, that's that. That's not a bad way of, uh, of calling it out. So, <laughs> so one thing that Phasmophobia does that, uh, or not Phasmophobia, that this game does that Phasmophobia doesn't, um, Phasmophobia uses all the same different types of ghosts. Not just the, the models of them, but they all look the same. They all act the same. The only difference is, is like the speed. The Revenant in Phasmophobia is extremely quick. Um, the other ones actually act a little bit different, but there's not a lot of tells. However, with this one, there are. With Revenants, for example, you can see it can't stand. So it's always on the ground and it's going to crawl towards you, but you'll never see it on its feet. The shadow, the shadow is just, just a shadow. It's just kind of a black figure that's out there. There's no, there's no actual shape to it. So you can actually tell what the ghost is without actually getting any of this evidence. But that's only half the battle. You still have to get the evidence to find out how to get rid of that ghost. So therein lies the issue. <laughs> Alrighty. Now let's go ahead and dive in. So we have a couple of other things here. We have an automatic writing book. Look familiar, guys. So let's see if we can actually get this guy to write. I don't know if in the tutorial this thing will actually do anything, but sign my book. <laughs> Anyway, it's another one of those things that it will allow you to uh, get feedback from the ghost, written or pictorial uh, or otherwise. We have holy water. So holy water is going to help us to be able to exercise the, the ghost and to help protect ourselves because the holy water can actually hurt uh, or, or stop the ghost from attacking. So Maintenance Abbey by Monks, this holy water bottle will... Uh, will need to be thrown on the entity uh, when this one will be visible to exercise them. So let's go ahead and... Excuse me. Uh, like I said, still getting used to the controls. So here is uh, holy water. Power of Christ compels you! Try that again. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so that's holy water. Man, I got an arm. <laughs> You have the shadow, shadow right behind you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, the shadow is creepy. All right. Next one is the Tiger Eye Stone. So paranormal wave issued by this stone will exercise certain entities fearing this kind of wave. The object can be thrown on the ground close to an area where the entity fre frequently come. So that means you can set it down on the ground. And if that thing walks over it, it's going to get a shock from this thing. Next is Incense Sticks. So smudge sticks for you Faz users. So the smoke issued by the incense stick will repel the entity if it's uh, if the this entity is adequately near the stick, and it can be used also to uh, not only just repel but also uh, uh, exercise as well. The ex action is the exact same as Faz. You just right click and it loads it up. This thing does have a, a time limit on it, so it only uh, lasts for so long. Um, and there's the way it looks. <laughs> Now, we have two things to help us stop a hunt, or at least protect ourselves during a hunt. The first one here is a crucifix. So crucifix, again, like Faz, uh, is something that you can use to stop it. So instrument will generate a temporary protection area against the entity, uh, meaning efficiency increased against demons, which is good because they are incredibly aggressive. The best part about this is it does work in the hand. You can just hold it. You don't have to throw it on the ground. But it also has a lifespan. It can only last so long before it goes bad. And uh, when it goes bad, it kind of turns this pale gray. So you'll know when it's done. The other thing that's a little bit different here is a statue of Mary. <laughs> so... You can carry this around if you want, or you can set it on the ground. And depending on the uh, the uh, entity, the, the spirit, some of them won't even care about this. They'll walk right over it. Some will be like, whoa, no thank you. So those are things you have to take into account as well. <laughs> All right. And that brings us to our last bit of evidence before I actually jump into the game and freak myself out. A spirit box. 
my best friend, the spirit box. So here are a whole bunch of sayings that you can have. Once again, you can play in a co-op stream. When you work in co-op, you, you uh, would be talking over Discord, and that way you can still communicate with, the, disc, uh, with the, the ghost without having to hit multiple different types of buttons to try and get it to work. So let's turn this one on. Can you come here? Spirit, give us a sign. I didn't say that. Spirit, give us a sign. Sorry, got to stop. Uh, talk closer. Spirit, give us a sign. Man, that one's hard to get. Spirit, turn on the light. Can you open a door? Spirit, show yourself. Show yourself. There we go. Give us a sign. It does not like this one. Jeez. I come in peace. Hi, I am a friend. <laughs> I come exercise you. <laughs> Can you write in the book? So those are the things that we're going to get. And uh, you can actually get a couple of different readings out of the uh, the uh, spirit box. Uh, you can get things like music, which is a part of evidence. You can get vocal return, uh, meaning they're actually talking to you. So it sounds like what you'd hear in like uh, your regular uh, ghost shows. Um, so spirit box EVP, when it talks in like a robotic voice back to you, uh, that's what you hear in phasmophobia. Spirit box radio means you start hearing like a sound or a song or something like that. And then voice in the house. You have to hear this when the spirit box is on to get this piece of evidence. But this can be super creepy because it does not come through the spirit box. It comes through the room. Oh, my God. Spine chilling. OK, <laughs> so um, this didn't get my voice that well earlier, but I already read the, the dev is working on it. Yeah, it is. It's still a little buggy. Again, it's very, uh, very early access. Uh, you know, it depends on your mic, depends on your settings, how well you pick up. I know that if you're working more like a, uh, a parabolic range, uh, you know, a, a mic that catches a whole room or like on a uh, uh, a headset it doesn't catch as well but if you're working on a nicer uh nicer mic that has directional sound it picks it up a lot better so it kind of depends on that trickster what's happening buddy how you doing good to see you <laughs> all right guys are you ready to do this because i am totally not um i i appreciate you all being here <laughs> i was here first yes i love it <laughs> All right, so we need to pick a contract. In my opinion, already way better than Phasmo. Definitely, definitely, yeah. It's, I mean, it's tough. It's a lot harder than Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia is such a, a cool, chill game. You can just relax, go in, yell at the ghost, get rid of a lot of uh, built-up frustration, stress from the day, leave and feel happy. This, there's no chill. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's go ahead and check the list of contracts. We have the uh, USA Lost House, Belgium, France. I'm still trying to figure. Are, I think I think these lines are how how hard this is, and like the lower the line it is, the uh, the easier it will be. I think I'm still kind of learning that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just added that one today. <laughs> All right, so let's let's try this lost house in the USA. See if that one's gonna be uh, be good for us here. So. All right, so a single entity to be exercised containing two to three evidence maximum. This old and lost house in the middle of the USA desert is a place of many hauntings relayed by different owners. Some of them would have disappeared in curious circumstances. We were solicited for exercise the place to prevent uh, that the next owner suffer the curse of this house like her predecessors. Now, again, please forgive the uh, the uh, English on this one. It is from a French dev, and they are working on setting up better translations. Early access, that's the way it goes. So, Adrian, what's happening? How you doing? You're not late to the party. In fact, we're just about to get started. We haven't done anything yet. I've just been kind of running through the basics of the game, but... It's about to get ugly. <laughs> Alrighty. So here is our RV. So for me as a German, this is perfect English. Ah, Adrian, you got a buddy. <laughs> My buddy Adrian here, he's also German. So 
probably going to... <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I love it. All right, so here is our RV. It's got a lot of stuff, and it, you can actually interact with it. So here we have our video cameras. We can see all those. This guy right here is going to help us to be able to find all of our equipment. So this is anything else that we have. Uh, one thing I do want to check and see is if I can buy some extra crucifixes. Let me see if I can actually do this. Oh my god, I can. All right, so we've got three crucifixes that I can use. There's a lot of stuff that I don't have. And again, it's just because I'm brand new to the game. I haven't bought anything. So we're going in with the absolute basics. So, <laughs> oh my God, this is going to be intense. I'm not, I'm not happy about this, but let's do it. <laughs> All righty. So here is our basic loadout, and you can always get more just by coming to the back here, checking up on this and being able to, to spawn in more equipment, but it has to be equipment that you have. So here I only have uh, three crucifixes that I can spawn in beyond the one that I have up here in front. So if I run out of that, I'm screwed. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Um... Like I said, I'm already, I'm already not too, uh, how do I put this? I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy about this. Um, okay, guys, <laughs> let's do this. <sighs> yeah, and again, the sounds are freaking nuts. So the first time we played this game, the ghost was in this room and we had just about everything, but it still killed us. You gotta be super quick here too, because there's just so much crap going on. Didn't even make it to the door. <laughs> oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Where was he? Where is he? Oh, dude. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Oh, Jesus. Well, I made it a little bit farther than you. Okay. Well. There we go. 